Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel, I'm Chris. Um, I didn't enlarge it yet. Um, you see this little button right here? Show support, oh, super thanks. Well, I now have those on my channel. So if you'd like to click on it, throw some, no, 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 bad. If you'd like to throw some, uh, some money, donate it to the channel, that'd be great, helps me out. If not, hey, I'm still making videos. Uh, if you have some you can great if you just don't want to because you don't like me enough hey I get it I don't I wouldn't donate to my own channel either so this is gonna be two parts this is uh, this is Saladan right but I'm guessing this is I know I'm a Saladan but this is is it now no maybe it's not yes it is it has to be is that a Okay, so I have to ask, is this a painting? Because that is, I'm looking at the, I mean, that is beautiful. Huh. I, I don't know how I've, I've become a fan of paintings, apparently. Okay, we're going to break this down into two 14-minute videos. Let's do them right now. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. Are we already starting off with an ad? Seriously? Can an 8,000 year old herb really increase shut your- Shut Shut your face. Shut your face. Do me a favor and shut your face, Timmy. It's not his name. All right, video time. All right, I was worried about sound. Hi. Okay. Many of them sided with the Crusaders and they released a man who was the greatest arch enemy of Islam, a man called Reginald de Chatillon. Soon as he mustered up an army, he marched on Mecca. And when Salahuddin heard this, he dispatched an army under Husamuddin Lutlu. And Husamuddin took a navy, he annihilated the army of Reginald. And four years after this, again, when the Muslims and the Christians had a truce, Reginald attacked a Muslim caravan traveling from Egypt to Syria. And when Salahuddin heard this, he again took an oath that he would kill this man with his own hands. And it was a... I think I covered a video of this. Yeah. If I remember correctly, I was really rooting for that guy to die. I think I did that video. Saladin had them surrounded in the town. And that guy like got out and attacked a caravan or something. And I was thinking Saladin was being very nice to not just go in and just start annihilating people. I just did this for annihilating people. I don't know what... He's just going to go in and start annihilating people. I don't know. It was a dance, apparently. I remember that. Because I really wanted to see that guy killed. And he was killed. And I was happy. And then I started laughing because I was way too happy to see someone die. <laughs> okay, video. On this occasion, that Salahuddin brought forth an army. And this is the famous battle, the Battle of Hittin. He changed the landscape of history. And Imam Zahbi rahmatullah says something profound here. He says this was the greatest victory for the Muslims. Since in Sham, since Khalid bin Walid defeated the Romans at the Battle of Yarmouk. And Salahuddin rahmatullah didn't ease up here. Two days later, he was in Acre, north. Then they took Turan, Haifa, Arsuf, Beirut, Nablus and a number of other places. He would cry at the apathy of the Muslim leaders. We cry at the apathy of the Muslim leaders today. All those problems which existed in the time of Salahuddin, all exist today. The only thing different is that there is no Salahuddin to bring the Ummah together. And then Salahuddin Rahmatullah marched on his greatest aim in life, and that was liberation of the holy places. 
the people loved Salahuddin. He won their heart. He was a true leader. He showed love and compassion to people. He was a Muhammadi. He was a Mu'min. The only language that he understood was the language of the Quran. The only language that he understood was the language of Islam and Iman. This was the kind of man Salahuddin was. He wasn't just a warrior. He was a man of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The good loved him. The bad loved him. The Muslims loved him. The non-Muslims loved him. Everybody loved Salahuddin. And what there's a, uh, and I've said it before, there's a game I play on PlayStation 3 called Civilization by Sid Meier. You pick a country, and then you start up and you expand, and there are other countries that will come around you. And I don't remember the country now. Maybe it's just Middle East. I don't remember. But Saladin is in there. And I swear, every single time he is there and he becomes some kind of a neighbor, he always introduces himself and he's like, hey! And of course the characters on the game are like, hum, 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 it's, it's entertaining. But, um, he, he always introduces himself and then he always tries to, you know, hey, give me some of your knowledge and I won't attack you. That man... I have never played that game and not had to go to war with him. It, so I knew who Saladin was before, um, because based off the game, <laughs> and then, then when I first saw him, I was like, oh, it's this guy from the video game. Okay, well, we'll see how this goes. And I watched a couple of videos on him and I was like, okay, well, yeah, it's not bad. The video game is terrible. He always tries to go to war with me. I can't negotiate with him. One time, I paid him. I had, I had a ton of funds, and I had all these other countries around me, and so I was paying a country to attack another country, and then paying a country to attack that. And I was having like two or three countries. I was just bribing them just to attack one country, and then I would turn and go somewhere else. And uh, Osaladan took my money went 10 turns attacking a country and then turned around and came at me for knowledge and went to war with me. So I was paying other countries to go to war with him and eventually my technology and my money and everything like that got too big. So then they stopped accepting bribes and tried to go to war with me. <laughs> I love that game. Sorry. What did this king leave behind him? King of Egypt. King of Syria, Lebanon, Yemen. What did he leave behind him? He left one dinar and 47 dirhams, some armor and a horse. This is all he left behind him. But I'll tell you what he left behind him. He left a legacy behind him. And on his tomb they wrote, Oh Allah, as his final victory, open for him the gates of Jannah. Where is he buried at? Side note, maybe they'll say okay, another. It better not be okay. It's gonna be another umzu ad. I I was actually trying to read and and I realized I can't read that. And today I want to speak about a person. You know, by Allah, numbers never scared him. Europe threw everything that they had at him. Salahuddin fulfilled the rights of jihad. Salahuddin fulfilled the rights of this ummah. Salahuddin was ready to sacrifice everything for the sake of Allah. It was almost as though Allah kept Salahuddin back from the people of Badr so he could deal with his enemies at a different place and a different time. And the testimony to the greatness of this man is that every single person claimed him. Even his arch enemies claimed him. When the news of his bravery and compassion reached Europe, they couldn't believe that a non-white, non-Christian man could be so brave and so compassionate. And Salahuddin Rahmatullah Alayhim Ajma'een, he was a Kurd. Because they felt that it was their duty that they had to liberate the land because they felt that they were an Ummah. And Salahuddin was born in the fort of Tikrit. 
And his mother mentioned that when I was pregnant with Salahuddin Rahmatullah Alay, I saw a dream that in my stomach I have a sword from the swords of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Great men create other great men. And this was the environment in which Salahuddin Rahmatullah Alay was brought up in. It was a military environment. There was never a day when the expulsion of the crusaders was not mentioned. But it was not only a military environment. It was a very religious, spiritual environment. And Salahuddin, from a very early age, he became a hafid of the Quran. He was a shafi in fiqh. And his greatest aspiration in life was to become a scholar. He loved the scholars. Then he had the honor of being tutored by a man regarding who Ibn Athi rahmatullah alayhi says, the Muslims never had a man who was as upright and caring and compassion as Nuruddin Zinki rahmatullah alayhi. And Salahuddin would say that Nuruddin is my master. He modeled himself on Nuruddin. And also Nuruddin realized the potential in Salahuddin. And this is why when in Damascus, crime became rife. He made Salahuddin at a very tender age in charge of the entire police of Damascus. And after... How old was he when he became police chief, basically? And in my mind, I'm thinking nine years old, and I know that's not right. By the way, Nuruddin Zinki? I mean... I don't want to. I don't want to overstep here, but if I ever have a child, man or woman, you're telling me Zinky for the first name doesn't sound cool. Oh no, I take that back. If I name my son Zinky. Zinky Zinky has a winky. Zinky Zinky has a tiny winky. Uh, yep, nope, can't do that. A while, the crusaders attacked Egypt. And what Zinky Zinky has a dinky winky. Yep, nope, still can't do it. What a deed the caliph in Egypt did is that he cut the hair of his wife and he sent it to Nuruddin. And this meant that we can no longer look after our women, assist us. And Nuruddin Rahmatullah didn't want to assist them because see, al adid and the Egyptians were Fatimite. But Shirku, the uncle of Salahuddin, convinced him. And Salahuddin Rahmatullah Alayhi says, so when my uncle came to me to take me to Egypt, I didn't want to go. One, because his aspirations was to become a scholar. But second, he mentions, you know, I thought I was going to die. You know, it is a possibility that you will dislike something, but there's good in it for you. And by Allah, Salahuddin going, there was good for the Ummah. There was good for history. He changed the landscape of history and Shirku rid Egypt of the Crusaders. And shortly after this, Adid remained the Khalif, but Shirku became second in charge. After a while, Shirku passed away and the Ulama and the Fuqaha, they chose Salahuddin Rahmatullah Alay as in the place of Shirku. And therefore Salahuddin Rahmatullah Alay became the second most powerful man in Egypt. He was only 32 at the time. And Salahuddin showed what a real leader should be. The people loved Salahuddin. He won their heart. He was a true leader. He showed love and compassion to people. Salahuddin was in Egypt and Nuruddin Rahmatullah Alay was in Syria. Now after Nuruddin passed away, Syria just fragmented and they began to side with the Crusaders and many of them were giving annual tributes. Uh -oh. They were actually giving annual tributes to the Crusaders and the people of Syria were disgusted because they were used to a man. I was just about to say that the person protecting them passes away so they're in a spot of who do we follow who do, who's going to lead us and if used no to a man if no one's going to lead us then we're going to have to pay like Nuruddin a powerful charismatic man and the people of Syria they turned to Salahuddin Rahmatullah alayhi and this was the time that Salahuddin started on his expeditions 
Salahuddin Rahmatullah spent longer. He spent longer fighting Muslims than he did non-Muslims. He fought with Muslims for over 10 years because he understood that if you are divided, you are weak. Many of them sided with the Crusaders and they released a man who was the greatest arch enemy of Islam, a man called Reginald de Chatillon. For 15 years, this man had been in prison. Nuruddin had left him in the dungeons. And what did this man do? Soon as he mustered up an army, he marched on Makkah. And Na'udhu Billah, he was saying, when I reach Makkah, I will bring the Kaaba to the ground. And then Na'udhu Billah, he said, I will go to Medina. And Na'udhu Billah, I will take the camel herder from his grave, speaking about the Prophet Sallallahu And I will bring him back to my palace in Keruk. And I will charge the Muslims to view his body. And then... Yeah, that's just disrespectful. What do you think that guy would say? That Reginald do shit face. What would he say if Saladin said, Hey, I'm going to go and dig up the corpse of Jesus and charge all Christians a fee. Do you think he'd be cool with that? No, he wouldn't. So don't do that then. Dick. Generations mentioned that when Salahuddin heard this, he took out his sword, he lifted it to the skies, and he said, Kill him. <gasps> he did! With my own hands. Oh, uh, let's just... I'm going to hit on pause and let's just hear these glorious sounds making words. By Allah, I will kill Reginald with my own hands. Because he had a deep love for the Prophet ﷺ. And he dispatched an army under Husamuddin Lutlu. And Husamuddin took a navy. He annihilated the army of Reginald and then he captured his men. He took him to Medina and he executed him in Medina. <laughs> and four years after this, again, when the Muslims and the Christians had a truce, Reginald attacked a Muslim caravan traveling from Egypt to Syria. And when Salahuddin heard this, he again took an oath that he would kill this man with his own hands. And it was upon this occasion that Salahuddin brought forth an army. And this is the famous battle, the Battle of Hittin. And the Crusaders brought forth an army. And when Salahuddin consulted his men, he said, what shall we do? Shall we carry on attacking their forts and their castles? Or shall we have a head on confrontation? And they said, carry on attacking their forts. And Salahuddin said, no. He said, we will take him head on. Because none of us knows how long he's going to live. And then he said, Oh my men, fight to please your Lord. Do not fight to please me. And they marched on to the army of the Crusaders. The Crusader army was considerably larger than the Muslim army. The Crusader army was deeply entrenched. And they had barricaded themselves. So Salahuddin Rahmatullah didn't rush. He showed what a military genius he was. What he did, he went to a nearby fort. And this fort had the women and the children of the soldiers there. And he lay siege to it. And then he put his back against the sea. The Christian charges were very strong. The Muslims had problems dealing with Christian charges. But tactically, the Muslims were far superior. So what the Christians thought was one charge and Salahuddin will end up in the sea. And this is exactly what Salahuddin wanted them to think. So next morning, they marched. It was midsummer. With them, they had the true cross. The true cross was the most sacred relic in Christendom. It was believed that a part of this cross, upon it, Isa was crucified. And they believed that as long as they have this, they could never lose a battle. They had actually believed that they had won the previous 20 battles because of the barakah of this cross. And what Salahuddin Rahmatullah did, he had put strategically, he had put archers on the way. And what he did, he poisoned all the wells. So when they began to march, these archers began to shower arrows. 
so many arrows that their movements became snail pace. Thousands of them had perished and they thought might would bring them relief. But the historians mention that Salahuddin Rahmatullah I got a question. How do you unpoison a well? You I mean you'd have to mention that you'd have to like drain all the water out of it, but it's it's a constant thing, right? It's just constantly filling up. Or do do you just expect that eventually the the poison will kind of just water's coming in somehow right so water's going out so are you expecting it to go i, I don't know i am not a well poisoning scholar i know few of you think i am i've lied about it i've said i am i'm not Salahuddin Rahmatullah's men had encircled them in a manner that not even an ant could go through. So from the Muslim camp, there were the cries of Takbir Allah Akbar. And from the Christian camp, there were the cries of the dying and the wounded. And next morning, Salahuddin Rahmatullah noticed that the brushwood was dry and the wind was blowing in the direction of the Crusaders. Fire. So it's midsummer, no water and they lit the brushwood and then now they began to choke on the smoke as well and it was here that the muslims attacked and they were reciting the verse and indeed it is a right upon us that we assist the believers and then salahuddin wanted to afflict the final psychological blow and that was to capture the true cross and salahuddin rahmatullah sent the entire regiment to capture it and when the regiment captured it this totally demoralized the Christians and they fell by the wayside and only 150 of them remained standing around the king, 150 knights and the Muslims attacked and Salahuddin Rahmatullah was watching this and his brother was standing next to him and he said, Alhamdulillah, we have defeated them and Salahuddin said, not yet. <laughs> and then he attacked again and the Christians went back and his brother said, Alhamdulillah, we have defeated them and Salahuddin said, wait, not yet. When that tent falls, the tent of the king, then we have defeated them. And when Salahuddin Rahmatullah was saying this, the tent fell. And what did Salahuddin do? What did he do? Did he jump up and down? He descended from his mount and he went into sajda. Because he understood that victory and defeat is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Salahuddin wasn't just a warrior. Ibn Shaddad mentions Salahuddin for years never missed Salah with Jamaat. He didn't live in a palace. He lived on a tent in the battlefield. He wasn't just a warrior. He was a man of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This was such a complete victory that when you looked at those who were dead, it was um, impossible to believe that anybody could have lived. And when you looked at those Christian crusaders who were alive, there were so many of them, one could not believe that any one of them was dead. And Imam Dhahbi rahmatullah says something profound here. He says this was the greatest victory for the Muslims since in Sham, since Khalid bin Walid defeated the Romans at the Battle of Yarmouk. Now I'm going to stop it. I was going to end it there, but then when I saw you, he was going to talk good about Khalid. Yeah, I'm going to let him continue. I've seen very uh, two different ways to spell Khalid. It, like this video isn't about him, but I'll always make it about him. I've seen two different ways to spell his name. Now, is that two different people? Which I know it's not. So is there a correct spelling? I don't know. So this is part one. I don't think... Reginald is dead yet. And I hope not. I want him killed in the second part. Give me something exciting to do later on when I watch part two. But until then... Thought I heard something. Probably just a ghost. Until then... 
like and subscribe, and have a good day, have a good night. Part two tomorrow.